Uh, so part of what we try to do here at StarTune is uh, provide some tangible uh, resources uh, to the creators at home. For you guys at home who are starting out and trying to actually make this stuff for us, we want to make sure that you have a little bit of information um, regarding the technology involved in what you're doing. Uh, so to that end, I brought somebody along today who's far more qualified uh, than myself, Chris Forney. Uh, maybe Chris, you can tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do. I have a lot of experience coming into studios and improving on the tools and acting as a technical director is the title, kind of means a bunch of different things at a bunch of different places. Right. But ultimately it's to help the artists work better, smarter, and produce better content in the yeah. end. Uh, so whatever means it takes, whatever software it takes, you're always trying to make people focus on what they need to focus on, which is the art, telling stories, making character animation, uh, and not have them worry about the tedium right. that the software sometimes brings. Right. right. So let's make the jump then to 3D with okay. that. Um, so 3, 3D options out there. And this is where, and I know even less about this stuff than I know about the 2D stuff. So I'm totally, this is all on you right now. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm a 2D guy myself. I'll recognize the names of most of them, but I, I can't speak to it at all. Okay. I mean, the obvious one is Maya. Yeah. Uh, everyone's using Maya. Uh, it, what's, the price, what's the price point like? 180 a month, I okay. think. Okay, um, so that would be considered a con for a lot of people. Yeah, for a lot of people, 180 a month is is costly. Yeah. Um, the nice thing about Maya is they're probably the ones that offer the most robust personal learning edition. Mm -hmm. So you can just download an edition to learn from. Okay. So you can do a, a lot of work trying to figure out what you're going to right, do in right. that free version, okay. and then pay for the 180 to pull it off yeah. for the month. Yeah, to pull it together. Uh, yeah, okay. and I think that's maybe a good approach for people. And they probably know that, like they. Well, you can't migrate the content. Oh. So you wouldn't be able to do it in okay. the free version. Okay. All right. Well, that, that makes sense. Uh, but. So you can take a practice run. Yeah, it, it's better to make the mistakes or learn the interface gotcha. in the free one, and then when you want to start paying the bucks to, okay. to use okay, the software. Okay, that makes sense, that yeah. makes sense. Um, but yeah. That's <laughs> too bad. <laughs> it's too bad. But it makes sense. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's the obvious 3D one. Yeah. Uh, there's 3DS Max. Mm -hmm. People are still using for animation quite a bit. Uh, I don't know much about 3DS Max. No. It, it used to be very common for video games and and then a lot of people migrated to Maya for feature film and, and TV series. Yeah. Um, but it's still very popular for TV series. Okay, okay so Maya, 3DS Max. Um, uh, but, but, it, but 3DS Max is a dated, is a more dated software. They're still being developed. Yeah? Yeah, 3DS Max is still, as far as I know, being developed. Okay. Um, Modo is another one. So Modo is Never done. Never heard of it. it it's, it's by the Foundry. So it's the same guys that make Nuke. Uh, so Nuke is really well known uh, for compositing and feature film compositing. Modo is more so for their 3D um, modeling. So it's initially done for modeling, uh, initially created to create the characters or to whatever you need to do, create um, props, rig, r not necessarily rigs, but it can do that as well. Yeah. Uh, it is getting more animation tools behind the scenes. It's uh, more and more used in animation, but it's still primarily a rig or, or a modeling piece of software. Um, so that's Modo by the Foundry. Okay. Uh, the other one would be Houdini. Uh, right. So Side Effects is Houdini. Um, I've used that in the past on character animation productions, but it's actually more focused nowadays in uh, effects, so feature film effects, and that one's expensive. Yeah. Yeah. So that is probably the biggest hurdle in in Houdini's side is it's not necessarily geared towards character animation yeah. and it's it's prohibitively expensive we're talking we don't see a lot yeah. of 3D at least for us i mean and, and, and it's it's you don't see as much casual 3D use no no there there's so much more overhead in 3D that yeah. that is ultimately the issue um, but there are resources out there to mm -hmm. produce 3D content i think it does happen yeah yeah uh, another good example of 3D would be um, Source Filmmaker. So Source Filmmaker, uh, the guys at Valve, so okay. the guys that made um, Half-Life, that kind of thing, yep. um, created a filmmaking tool with their engine. So it's a video game engine. It all works inside the, the Half-Life Steam, yep. uh, not Steam, what is it, the Source engine. And you basically can initially animate the characters in game. So you run them around as you would. 
And then once you've recorded the initial acting of the characters, you can go in and do character action, you, or character animating. You can animate their facial features. You can do a phenomenal amount of stuff live, directly in their engine. And that's all free. Mm. Uh, I think you maybe have to buy a game or two to, to get some of the resources. But the source filmmaker is free and has a really good character animation system in really? it. Really? Yeah. Uh, and it's robust. Like, we're talking where Maya needs days, if, or hours, if not days, to render content. Source is in engine. So if you want to do voice acting or, or character facial acting, it can be grabbed on the actual video game character's face, moved around, yeah. and you animate it there. Is anyone using it as a filmmaking tool? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's it's one of those fan-based tools that a yeah. lot of people are doing sort of fun fan right. films okay. uh, with characters from the, the Valve games. Um, but Valve themselves use it for all of their uh, films. So okay. like the, the Meet the Heavy, Meet the Sniper, that sort of thing for the Team Fortress stuff that came out yeah. a couple of years back was all done in Source Filmmaker, okay. and they released that free. So interesting. I, I'm not sure how easy it is to get your own assets, your own resources in yeah. there, but uh, that's a good example where like, there's, it, it's fully featured. It has uh, editing software built into it. Right. Everything is there for you to produce 3D content really and all it easily. Takes, all it takes is the right person to come along and decide they're going to do something with this and yeah. then to see what it can do. And th the, the interesting thing about that is more and more people are talking about doing uh, video game engine productions. They're talking about doing uh, productions in Unreal. In mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Unity is another one that has animation built into it. So you can do character animation in Unity now. And uh, even those companies, so Unreal, uh, the guys at Epic are making Unreal more of a film uh, system. So, but that one's fairly expensive. Unity mm -hmm. is one that you can download generally for free. Uh, you can download the, the base version of Unreal for free as well, the right. UDK. But um, Unity is the more prevalent one, and you can do character animation in that. There are films out there that people are just animating directly in Unity. So is there anything out there in the really casual like app market that does anything real? How do you mean? Well, I mean, I, there, there's, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of drawing, like almost kid stuff, almost like, this is that we, because we touched on this a little more last year because we were looking at well, where the real kids would play with stuff. Okay. Is that, I mean, like, like NFB has some anima animation yeah. apps that do interesting things, and filmmakers have used them. Um, I, I don't generally touch any of this stuff. So have you, in your experience, this scene, is there anything for the casual animator, whatever that means? The, the casual animator, I would say, the most accessible thing would be stop -mo. Yeah. The most accessible thing. I mean, I remember just taking a video camera and hitting on-off like just take one frame manually mm -hmm. and doing films that way. And that's a decent approach. It creates an aesthetic. Um, so that's kind of what the NFB app does. It's very stop mo, uh, Norman McLaren yeah. sort of style. And it's very successful at it. Um, as far as like the, the kid app side, I mean, a, a good example of that, I mean, they probably hate that I'm calling it a kid app, is that uh, Adobe Character Animator. That's no, I don't worry. You can say whatever you okay. want about that. <laughs> uh, Adobe Character Animator, like it feels like you're taking a rig and then it tries to match what you're doing. Uh, it's fun. It's facial matching, so you take a webcam and act in front of it, yeah. or you set up canned animation and it's able to reproduce it. Um, it's not something I would do a full series in, no. um, but it, it can certainly provide content. It can it can do it if it's focused for that 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 need. The uh, the Octocat David O'Reilly film was done in MS Paint and suited exactly what it yeah. needed to. Uh, you could produce an MS Paint film and then put it together in Premiere or put it together in QuickTime Pro and it, it, it's still a film. Cool, cool. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for doing this with us today. Yeah. Um, if you like what we're doing here today, please uh, subscribe to our channel. I think it's down here. Um, and like and share and tell everybody what we're doing over here. All right, thank you so much for doing this with us, Chris. Of course. Chris. Yeah. And, uh, and we'll talk to you guys later. <laughs>